So guys, I'm extremely proud of me and the team because the final is happening right now, but we're not watching it because we have the last interview for you with Salman from Japan. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum wow, Good to see you, bro. You're leaving tonight? Yeah. Perfect timing, inshallah. Let's begin. Inshallah. Uh, my name is Kyoichiro Sugimoto. Uh, my surname name is Salman. Uh, I'm from Japan. I was born in Seki City, in Gifu Prefecture, Japan. And I embraced Islam 25 years ago in Japan. Uh, it is said that my family came from like samurai clan originally. And your town is known for making what? It's a samurai sword. For the 750 years, they are producing samurai sword. So, Brother Salman, what are you doing in Qatar? Well, uh, I do dawah, especially for the Japanese non Muslims. And the Japanese understand Japanese uh, more than any language, right? More than any language, yeah. How many Japanese people have you spoken to and how are the conversations? Yeah, Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, 218 Japanese non-Muslims yeah. and uh, established quality communication, conversations in Katara Masjid yeah, in Doha. Yeah. And how was their response? What kind of things did they say? Well, our response was uh, basically they are very first time to know Islam. It's really first time you know, to visit Masjid for the first time in their life. So I introduced very basics of Islam, especially Tawheed, especially the existence of God and the oneness of God. And then they are really surprised to know that the logic behind how Muslims logically believe these things. And they actually, they agree, they understand these points. There was a Japanese woman who stopped you in Qatar while we were walking. Oh, yes. What did she ask you? Oh, yes, yes. See the one who visited us, yeah? And then she said she had extraordinary experience, a big surprise. Uh, she, when she was eating at one of the restaurants, then um, just she finished eating, and uh, before leaving, uh, you know the payment bill was already paid by someone, you know, unknown person, you know. So so she was so surprised. Oh, who paid? You know, of course, the local Qataris, I believe. What would you say the Japanese people, how have they felt coming to a Muslim country from your conversation? Okay, the, before they're coming, actually, they're very much scared because of, you know, must be information about Middle East is so scary, so dangerous place, right? The terrorism and things. So they never imagined that this security, this safety and hospitality, they never imagined that before coming here. So they are rather surprised. Well, how much do they know about Islam? Well, first they are surprised about Azam and then how this uh, architect, right? Uh, so like spiritually, so advanced, right? So calm and uh, tranquility there. So that was their first impression. They are introduced Islam you know, gradually, the basics. So they learn a lot. Mashallah, you also translated the entire Quran yes. into Japanese. Why did you do that and how did you start okay. that journey? You know, the, all the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our, our mission is actually convey the message and to invite. Yeah? So final decision and the guidance from Allah. So why not, first and foremost, we just convey the message, entire message of the Quran yeah, into Japanese language. And then let them read, because we have very deep, uh, widespread reading culture in Japan. Everybody read. Yeah? So instead of I speak, my language actually, you know, my word is nothing actually, right, compared to Quran. So let the Quran speak, you know, so people will understand deep. Yeah? So hopefully they will get the Hidayah from one of the verses. It took two years, yeah, almost like every day I spend four hours, yeah, every day. And then there's two translators. And the uh, unforgettable experience, you know, in terms of embracing Islam through the Quran, uh, it was uh, just after published, yeah, the same year, the same year, I made a public speech on the Quran, the miracle of the Quran. Then there is one couple, yeah, one non Japanese non-Muslim couple just approached me and their wife asked me one question. So what was your change after you embraced Islam? So I said, the tranquility of the heart, the stability of the heart. That was the only question she asked. And after 10 minutes or 15 minutes, just one brother uh, called me. There, the one couple want to embrace Islam. So I was called to a different room, and they were sitting there to ask a question. 
And what happened? What happened? Yeah? So this husband said, I understood. You know, the message is true. So just all of a sudden, the I had it. And is this rare in Japan? Very rare. What's your message to the Da'is around the world? We have so-called two billion Muslims around the world. Uh, but alhamdulillah, uh, only 300 Duats came to Qatar officially. And we have to continue this da'wah uh, until the day of Qiyamah, inshallah, the day of judgment. So hopefully we can be a best instrument or best instruments uh, to convey the message of Islam for whole humanity. And for me, especially for the land of Japan. So let's cooperate each other. So that is uh, my message for fellow Muslims. What's your message to the Muslims who don't give any da'wah? Mm. Well, I could say that the da'wah is, uh, is a duty for every Muslim, even though the Sharia perspective, this is a communal duty, is a fard of However, it depends on the context. Yeah? For example, like in Japan, uh, almost there is no full-time da'wah. So I think the, in that situation, uh, everyone has to have certain responsibility, certain role to play. Uh, even not necessarily direct dawah, but even indirect dawah, because 99.9% they are non-Muslim in Japan, right? So it is very urgent and so important to convey the message now.